sneeze at 120 miles per hour? Did you also know that every time you sneeze, you have been programmed to close your eyes? Where does your hair grow from? How can the thin layer of skin on your head send out a special hair? It has been formulated on your genes to send out a certain type of hair for the head. Hair different from that which grows on the arm or on the eyelids or on the eyebrows. Imagine if your eyebrows or eyelashes that grew to the length of the hair on your head. <laughs> Think of the fine row of hair that makes up the eyelash or of the way the hairs face the same direction on the eyebrow. Have you ever studied the ordinary garden snail and wondered how its shell is able to grow in proportion to its body? When it is a baby snail, it has a baby shell. As it doubles in size, it doesn't discard it. The hard shell also doubles in size. Do you credit the snail with having a mind brilliant enough to make its own shell? How does a grubby little caterpillar get rid of all its legs while inside a cocoon, grow two fresh ones, then form itself into a beautiful butterfly? Perhaps you could mumble uh, the evolution <laughs> and believe that it could happen if millions of years were involved. Millions and billions. But all this happens in a few weeks. Do you give a baby credit for having the ability to grow its own teeth? How did you grow both sets of yours? If you ever decide to get false teeth, will you have them made? Or will you wait for chance to make a pair for you? <laughs> Look at your fingernails. Where did they grow from? What makes up their substance? Look at how your, how your hands hold stuff. Notice how your fingers cradle stuff while the thumb holds it. One thumb comes to the right side, the other thumb to the left. Both thumbs bend forward. If they bent the other way, you couldn't hold the book. Hands have been designed for the purpose of holding. How is it that your lungs keep breathing irrespective of your will? You have been doing it without a second thought while you have been listening to me blabber on about fearfully and wonderfully made. In fact, becoming conscious of it can hinder the process. Lungs seem to work best without any conscious thought from the mind. How does your subconscious mind continually feed you with thoughts, even when you sleep? Listen to it talk to you and keep you company. It never stops. Try and stop it. Put, put, pause this video, sit down and think of nothing for five minutes. I bet you can't. Your subconscious mind has been set in motion and it has little to do with your will. Think of the complexities of the human mind. It is feeding your understanding with knowledge right now by translating these words into words in your mind and automatically filling them into your memory bank. <laughs> right at this moment your liver, kidneys, heart, pancreas, salvia glands etc are all working to keep your body going. You don't even have the power to switch them off and on. During your sleep tonight your heart will pump 75 gallons of blood through your body each hour. Contrary to the common belief your lungs are more than just bags into which you breathe smoke. <laughs> they are designed to filter out oxygen filter oxygen out of the air you breathe. These organs contain 300 billion tiny blood cells called capillaries. Your entire blood supply washes through your lungs every once every minute in your lifetime. The marrow in your bones will create approximately half a ton of red corpuscles. You have focusing muscles in your eyes that move an estimated 100,000 times each day. The same eye within it, a retina, that covers less than a square inch and contains 137 million light-sensitive cells. Even a wide-eyed Charles Darwin said, to, to suppose that the eye could have been formed by a natural selection seems, I freely confess, absurd in the highest degree. I agree with him there. Very absurd. Your brain contains 10 billion neutrons, microscopic nerve cells. Your stomach, which produces four pints of gastric juice each day, has 35 million glands lying in it. Next time you eat a delicious meal, be thankful to God for the 8,000 taste buds that were put into your mouth. Imagine how boring eating would be without them. George Gallup, the famous statistician, said, I could prove God st statistically. Take the human body alone. The chance that all the functions of the individual would just happen is a statistical monstrosity. Was it an accident that your ears were designed to capture sound? The grooves, bumps and ridges are made to catch passing sound waves and channel them into your eardrum. Again, your hands were made to grip and feel. The tongue was made to taste food and to shape speech. The nose was made to smell. What if your ears face backwards or your nose upside down? Think how bad that would be if it was like proper raining, like you're trying to get home and stuff like that. 
Or if your mouth had two tongues. I'm, <laughs> I'm serious. Listen, I'm serious. If humanity just happened with no purposeful design, why don't we see such creatures? And mon mon can't even say that. Why don't we see such creatures? In fact, we see the very opposite. From the teeth of a dog to the legs of a grasshopper, one can see practical design in everything that has been made. Now, if incredibly brilliant creative force made all things, then it is not only infinitely in more intelligent than whom it made, but is surely familiar with what it has made. Not only did it create one, every one of the 100,000 hairs on the average non bald human head, but it is also familiar with each individual hair. If the force can make the eye, it is not blind itself. Go read Psalm 94 verse 8 and 9 and you'll, you'll understand what I mean. Creation reflects the genius of the creator's hand. Let's look at a common cow, alright? Just look at a cow, yeah? Someone once said, Here is a brown cow that eats green grass, which turns into white milk, then yellow butter, which is eaten by a man who has ground... <laughs> who has red hair and blue eyes think of how you were able to invent a machine that could turn like could, could think of how grass cuttings become milk cheese butter and yogurt all from just a little stirring and churning imagine if you were able to invent a machine that could turn your grass into milk yet the cow does just that tell me tell me how she does it if it's so simple Make your millions by inventing a machine that turns grass into milk. You can call it a lawn mower. That's, that's a pretty lame joke. The cow does it with little effort. Is she wiser than you? Explain to me how a sparrow knows he's a sparrow and stays with other sparrows. Or how a baby knows how to look into the eyes of its mother when no one has taught it to do so. Tell me how strawberries can grow next to garlic and yet both derive their own unique tastes from the same soil and the same water. How was a wasp made so that its wings flap at 100 times every second? Or the housefly at 190 per second? Or the mosquito at an amazing 500 times every second? The most godless must be humbled by a sense of awe and wonder when standing beneath the mighty power of Niagara Falls or as he gazes into the Grand Canyon or stares into the sky at night and sees the infinity of space. How much more should we be humbled by the maker of these things? So you can, you can clearly see that there is a creator. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I know evolutionists and atheists try to use Einstein as a vain attempt to, sh to show atheism to be intellectual. But ha Albert Einstein was... Uh, was an atheist. He wasn't. He, the father of all scientists made a number of statements that clearly refute such a claim. He said, in the view of such harmony in the cosmos which I, with my limited human mind, am able to recognise, there are yet people who say there is no God. But what makes me really angry is that they quote me for support of such views. That was written in the expanded quotable Einstein Princeton University Press, page 204. He also said, we know nothing about God and the world at all. All our knowledge is but knowledge of school children. Possibly we shall know a little more than what we do now, but the real nature of things that we shall never know. Never. Page 207. He even revealed the insightful mind with, I see a pattern but my imagination cannot picture the maker of the pattern. I see a clock but I cannot envision the clockmaker. The human mind is unable to conceive of the four dimensions, so how can it conceive of a god? Before whom a thousand years and a thousand dim dimensions are as one. Page 208, he also said, I want to know how God created this world. I am not interested in this or that phenomenon, in the spectrum or this or that element. I want to know his thoughts, the rest are details. Page 202, those who take the time to read the Bible can know how God created this world. Seriously guys, just read Genesis chapter 1. God created the heavens and the earth. Done. And they can read the thoughts of God throughout the Holy Scripture. The problem is the Bible is not merely a history book, as some maintain. It is a moral book. And for that reason, sinful man refuses to open its pages. The psalmist informs us, The entrance of your word gives light in Psalm 119 and 130. And the Bible further tells us that men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil they refuse 
They refuse to come to the light because it exposes their sinful deeds in John 3 verse 19 to 20. 